I, I don't know if I have a voice. Um, well, where do I begin? I guess, you know, to be really, we were flat on our backs there early. Um, the energy that Wright State brought, um, they were quicker to balls, they were quicker to their defensive assignments. Um, they, they were ready, and it wasn't that we were not ready. It, it was, they, they just had a little more energy than we did, and we found a way to, to come back and, and play hard and, and keep fighting and show that, that pride that, that, that I know these guys have and the fans like to see, and, and um, they did it. They did it. It was, it was just determination, one possession at a time, and these two guys, the one on my left, one on my right, made big plays, big shots, and it was the defensive end, I think, that really told us, told the, it really tells the story. We were able to take a team that really shoots the ball well and, and get them to, to miss enough shots to give these guys an opportunity to win. And I, I'm just so proud of them. And um, <laughs> I guess I'll leave it at that. Did you get back to playing the way you like to play? You had a lot of free throws here. Um, you know, you've been talking about that, getting back to what, what you guys like to do. Yeah, you, you can see in that second half when we, we made that run and we were able to get the lead, we did it from the inside. And we really we got to the free throw line. We, we picked up some fouls. And we, uh, we needed Cooper Wood off of the court. I mean, he's fast to the ball. He's athletic to those rebounds. And we were able to do that. We were able to get some other guys in foul trouble too. And the only way to do that is if you're playing the ball inside. If you're shooting a lot of jump shots, you're just not going to get there. And uh, you're right. We, we, were, we did get back to playing the style of basketball that's going to be successful for this team. Ricky, what are you thinking going into overtime? You think you guys are in okay shape? Or what? Yeah, I think we're in a, a, a real good shape. Uh, we came out in the second half and we, we fought back. Uh, I think we uh, had the momentum going into overtime. It's the kind of game that can be a confidence booster for you guys? Yeah, it's a real confidence booster. Um, you know, Wright State is a very good team. Uh, you know, we dropped one the other day, so beating them, uh, fighting back and being able to beat those guys in overtime is a real confidence builder for us. Rick, how important was that shot by James Ayers? You were up one point and then he hit the three-pointer, and now you're up four. Uh, that's, that, that was very important. Um, gave us a little space, um, made it a two-possession game, so uh, it was a little easier on us going back on defense. Dante, you were getting to the hoop a lot early, a lot of layups. What was happening for you there? How were you able to do that? Mm -hmm. It was uh, basically a lot of switches going on. And I just converted on the switches. And I was stepped to what I was do best, what Coach told me to do, be aggressive and go to the hall. Um, do you have a different mindset approach when you start a game as opposed to when you come off to the bench? No. Do you look at things differently at all? No, it just. I'm an energy guy. I, just, I bring a lot of energy. Coach told me don't try to do too much. Just let the game come to you and uh, stick to the principle that I do. Don't do too much. Just rebound and help the team out. Coach, what were you looking for with that lineup change there today? Well, I was just looking for some, some life, a little bit of energy. I mean, I, I don't like to mess with things and, and tinker with things too much because I think guys get into roles and we had clear roles. But we've kind of hit a stretch here where – our identity and our roles seem to be a little cloudy. And I just thought it was a good time to make, make some switches and to allow some guys to kind of settle in a little bit. Tony Meyer had been picking up a couple quick fouls early and never really got a chance to get into a rhythm, so I figured I'd give him a chance. Lonnie Boga, as a freshman, I think he just felt the pressure of, of a freshman starting. And I, who knows? But talking to the young man, he's like, Whew, Coach, thank you. So, and I never, I had never heard a kid say thank you for not starting me, coach. He's so, for, yeah, yeah this is starting. what he says. Thank you, coach. I just, you know, I, I like to see the. I'm glad I get a chance to see the game at the beginning and kind of settle down a little bit because he really felt that by starting he had to prove himself. Just go out there and play, and by putting some older players in there, some mature players in there, it. it I don't know if it really helped at the beginning, but it produced <laughs> produced a victory. How about that? <laughs> What did you think of the beginning, falling behind by 15? Uh, they are three-point shooting maybe and some yeah, turnovers by you guys? They're a rhythm team. And what I was really concerned about was, was exactly what happened. I know they, they, their curl routes, and you try to come on the inside of those screens, they flare to the corner, and they get shots. Their misdirection and their curls and their, the speed of their cuts, I mean, they make shots. So 
as a coach, you try to find, okay, so how do I handle that? Now, if you playing a team that's full of shooters like them, you would say, uh, maybe not a zone because <laughs> they're going to get open shots. But I really felt the rhythm was more important. So uh, being down 15, you have to change it up. And we came into the game thinking about a little zone, and we just had to go to it a lot earlier than I expected. It seemed like you extended the, the defense out beyond the arc because their first three-point shot in the second half came in a little bit over the 13-minute mark. Right. Yeah, we, we had to make some adjustments knowing that uh, Coach Brownell, he's, um, he's very good. Um, he, um, he, he really is good at taking a look at teams and trying to find uh, counters or weaknesses. And so it's a chess match. And I knew he was going to come out with some different things. And we're just hoping that we can make the right adjustments, just like he's hoping he can make the right adjustments. And their shooters are going to just going to look for spots. And I felt they were going to be a lot more aggressive. So we wanted to make sure that we were a little more aggressive out at the top. Ricky, what you got you guys going to start the second half? Scored the first 13 points. On a half-time speech. <laughs> 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 Did they give you the Gettysburg address? <laughs> no, he no, just made it, made sure, um, just reinforced some things. Uh, the things that he talked about at the beginning of the game, uh, we really didn't, we did, really didn't come out and, and do at first. Um, as far as getting to their shooters, um, chasing over the screens, getting over the screens, and helping each other. Uh, so just reinforced some things, and you know, uh, was coach being coach. Vocal and, and enforcing those things. Yeah. So. Pretty vocal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Coach, a big picture. You get two out of three at home now. It's two big conference wins. Uh, I know you'll say you wanted all three of them, but well, of course you want to win them all. Um, this league is so tough, and you look at the travel partners of Wright State and Detroit. They're very difficult to, to prepare for, and we're just looking at it one at a time. We know that it doesn't get any easier. That's why at home you just got to give everything that you have and, and try to defend that home court the best that you can and then go on the road and just try to steal a few. So now we move to the road and we're going to just take it one at a time.